Okay, so now that we have our canvas, we have our references set up, now we're playing with brushes. And the way we can modify them is with brush settings. Now this is just a, a round, hard-edged brush. But with shape dynamics, something that's really important to make this look less uh, technical is to play with the size jitter. Jitter means that it's not always going to be exactly the same. It's going to fluctuate a little bit. And the other thing you can fluctuate with is the minimum diameter. Maybe you don't want it to get to needle point thin all the time, right? And then angle jitter is going to be incredibly important when we have a brush that isn't a circle. But a circle at different angles is still a circle. So that's something we'll play with later. Roundness jitter, it will like round out your edges and that can make a big difference, right? And you can set a minimum roundness, maximum roundness. That is all just on shape dynamics. So now let's play with that brush. And now you see how it has more character. It's a little bit more like charcoal or, you know, a real substance. And sometimes we want that. If I'm going for this look, I want something a little bit more like that. Okay, now what if we actually make our own brush? So what I want you to do is to create a new file now that's just 1,000 by 1,000 pixels. So not inches, just 1,000 by 1,000 pixels. It doesn't matter the resolution because we're setting the exact pixels we want. And within this square now, and I can use this modified, you know, round brush. You can see how the roundness really changes it. And I can change its size, make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to make kind of a scattered rough brush. And my poor Photoshop's already having a little bit of trouble keeping up. So I might have to boost its performance under preferences. And you might find you need to do this too. It also helps not to have extra things open, right? So if you go to preferences and performance, we can say how much of the available RAM do I want it to use? And you really shouldn't go above 90%. <laughs> and then the history states, I'm actually gonna take that down just to save running memory to only 100 history states instead of my usual 500. And that should help it keep up with me a little bit better as I paint. Okay, so when you make a brush, it has to be, it's, you'll get the most options if it's just solid black and white, right? No grayscale in it. And that way we can set not just size for pressure, but also opacity for the pressure. So that's why I'm using just a regular default brush and I can make it more linear but notice how I'm kind of making it almost like a fingerprint and I'm kind of keeping it directional at 45 degrees and I'm making it a little bit oval on a tilt that's going to give me the most uh, variations now these big blobs I did at the beginning what if I want to cut those out a little bit well I can switch my defaults to now instead of painting with black I'm painting with white and I can cut out of them a little bit and just splatter that just a little get my own little Jackson Pollock just black and white okay so let's say this is my brush how do I save it it's incredibly simple you go to edit and you say define brush preset and I'm gonna call this my Carl tutu brush if you make a brush on your computer, please give it your name, right? So I'll know later whether it's one that's active or not. And just say, okay. Now I have shape dynamics open. And if I just use this brush as is, that's what it's going to look like. It's going to look terrible. But if I turn on shape dynamics under brush settings, and I control the size based on pin pressure, then it's going to be a pressure sensitive brush. And then if I jitter that a little bit and if I play with the minimum diameter a little bit and I angle jitter it a little bit that especially is going to help if I round it out a little bit now I'm gonna get a more interesting brush so now let's go back to my original and let's go to a size that's you know around 300 pixels like I was doing before okay and now 
Let's paint with black. Now you can see that that brush has a lot more character at the edge, right? Even has some openness. Now if I wanna, that's good for sketching, that's good for getting started. But later I can add texture to it. I can add um, kind of color dynamics, multiple colors into the brush, lots of different things. But shape dynamics is the main thing that makes it so you control your brush. That along with opacity and pressure sensitivity should give me what I need. Okay, so now I'm ready to sketch. And instead of sketching with black, remember I've locked my blank white layer so it won't let me paint on that. I don't want it to. I'm gonna pick an underpainting color. And if I wanna steal a color, just like we do with digital coloring, I can just hold down option and it will change my brush tool right to the, the paint dropper tool. And it will pick up any color within Photoshop. Bless you. So maybe I wanna do something that's like this warm gray. And I might go for a little bit smaller. Okay, so now I can just start painting and sketching in, keeping it loose. Now that's at 100% opacity. And usually I'll sketch at a lower opacity, but there's lots of ways to approach it. Like maybe I wanna just make it big and bold and 100%. So I just kind of first scrub in a shape, right? At 100%, about the size I want his head to be. Then I'm gonna steal another color that's lighter. And I'm gonna start scrubbing in some of the, the highlights. And I can steal them right from the photo as well. Right. So I'm gonna be surprised by what these colors are in the different contexts. So I like to have color inspiration separate from my photo reference. And then I want a shadow tone. And I might start putting that in. This is really rough. It'd be like if I were sketching with magic markers. Okay. Just trying to get the shapes. This is shape painting. And this is how you can actually do it the fastest way. Just at 100% opacity, all on one layer. Just really chunking it up. Try not to think too much about it. I'll show you some other ways. This doesn't work for you. And so far, the computer is working out for me. It's a little laggy. It's doing okay. Don't be afraid of color with digital painting. Some people are so afraid of color, they do everything in grayscale and then add color later. You can do that and you'll get, you know, really controlled representational values. But remember, this should match the way that you would like to paint. It's not, you're not trying to be a machine. So I say just play with color. Notice I'm not changing my brush size. I'm using this big kind of 332 pixel brush on this 11 by 14 and 350 pixel per inch canvas. And I am just painting away, stealing colors for myself at 100%. This is very rough. Notice I am not ever going to use pure white. <laughs> I am always going to steal my whites. Like the whites of his eyes are not white. The highlights in his hair are not white. And the problem with just having a blank white background is it can make it feel very much like um, everything's darker than it is should be. And so as part of the process, we'll change to a gray background eventually. But right now I'm just blocking it. Then he's got this intense color. Shows he's a bishop. But I want to play with that a little bit. Throw some of these sock colors in there. And I do not have a clear um, preconceived notion of what this painting will be like. And I really don't want you to either. This is just to get used to these tools.
Okay. So let's get the other ear in there. So I didn't do any kind of linear sketching at all, no diagrams. And notice I'm not even attempting his glasses, right? And that's because I'm just trying to get rid of a lot of the white, get rid of a lot of that excess, like empty space. And playing with this brush I've created just at 100% opacity. It's hot pinks. But I'm doing some really important work here. I'm deciding kind of the shape of this painting, of this caricature. Because even if you're going for something really representational that really kind of matches the reality of what your subject matter looks like, whether it's an animal or whether a person, it's still coming th through your taste. So you are still stylizing it to some degree. And the first decisions you're making are just the shape, the composition. Think of it as a spot illustration, right? The angle. Now, I really want to get across kind of the joy and the energy of this guy. So doing everything on horizontals and verticals doesn't make as much sense, right? Give him his little hat. And all I'm using is the brush tool and option. Okay, so now this is, this is just my rough painting. You know, I can put in more shadows and it helps introduce me basically. This is just kind of playing and getting introduced to your subject matter. What makes him fun to paint, or I think it will be fun to paint, it is so far, is that he's got so many different shadows and textures on his face. When you try to do someone who's really, really like made up and photoshopped and like a clean uh, perfume ad photo or something, it's not a whole lot to play with in the actual painting. But we learn from trying. All right. I'm going to block in his nostrils a little bit. Spin those highlights. Okay, so now I'll broaden his shoulders a bit. Oh, don't like that. Remember Command Z, and if you hold down Shift or Option Command Z, rather, you can go back multiple steps. You shouldn't even have to go to your history. Now my history only remembers 100 steps back now. So 100 steps goes by real fast in digital painting. So instead, just get used to painting over and working more. Try not to use, try not to be uh, too cautious. You know, just paint, just get out of the way. Okay, now this is all 100% color. And all the colors I just stole from my different color references. But the beauty of digital painting is we can set our brush at a different opacity, and then we can create our own colors because we'll layer them on top and then steal from those. So that's my speed sketch layer. Now, this is a trick I can do. I can use some digital technique, right? And I'm going to use the um, lasso tool I'm going to go over to here and I'm going to lasso basically the part that I'm doing a portrait of. And I'm going to say Command C. Then I'm going to go back to my original here. And I'm going to say Command V, paste it in. Then I'm going to make it larger, right? I can take its opacity down. It comes in as a new layer. And this is not the same as tracing because that can look really dull, really boring. Instead, what I'm doing is I'm going to take my, my loose shape painting and then use the warp tool to try to help match the proportions. Right? So there's my painting. There's the guy. Now I'm going to go to my speed sketch layer. And I'm going to hit uh, Command-T, right-click, and warp. And I'm going to line up.